this is question three from paper two from the 2020 Ordinary Level Leaving Cert Maths exam. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a playlist that will bring you to the, all the questions, my solutions to all the questions in this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question, so you can try it in your own time before looking at my solution. This question is all about statistics and data. Bit of a weak spot for me, so if there is any corrections, I'll put them in the description below. Um, in this question, they have a thousand people in a survey, and the first part says, just give the uh, margin of error for a survey. Now, it's a useful one to remember for real life. If you ever read a new, in a newspaper or online about some survey being done, always keep an eye out for the number that they tell you how many people were in the survey, because that'll give you the margin of error. And that's just one divided by the square root of that number. In this case, it's a thousand. And if we divide, if we do this on a calculator, I have it in my notes here, we'll get out the answer 0 0.0316. Is this going on? Now, it tells us to round it off to one decimal place. I have seen students round this off to zero. Because 0, 0.0, well, the nearest decimal, one decimal place is zero. The problem is they didn't ask you to round this number. They asked you to round off um, the, the percentage number, which is 100 times bigger than this. 3.16, and it continues on. They want this rounded off to one decimal place. So round this off, it's uh, 3.2. Okay, that's the first mistake. Some students probably would have, could have wrote zero there. An the examiner would have understood take, taking one or two marks away if you did the rest correctly. All right, part two. Uh, of those, 762 people believe it's safe to use their credit cards online. Uh, use your answer in part one, this answer here, to get a confidence interval. Okay, so we have 762 out of 1,000. So let's write that, 762 out of 1,000. If I write that in a percentage, that's just 76.2%. Uh, so 76.2% of people said it was safe. Now, this is what you see in a newspaper all the time. You see this number reported, and they don't give this number too often. So that's a little dangerous. Um, let's put them together. This is only our best guess at the answer. It could be off by this much either side. This, is, this is itself is only a rough guess as well. So we just need a number that's this much smaller and this much bigger than this. And that, that'll give us our confidence interval. So we'll put, so I think it's P we use, I'm not sure actually. Um, this number minus 3.2 is 73%. And this number plus 3.2 is 79.4%. So this survey, they might have, it might have said um, 762 people, but I will read that as somewhere between 730 and 794 people, or 73% or 79.4%. I think the answer is in there. I'm actually, I'm 95% confidence. That's what, what, what's the 95% confidence interval. Okay, let's move on to part three. In part three, they tell us that a media company claims 80% of people um, are happy to give their credit cards online. Do a hypotenuse test. Uh, well, 80% is outside my confidence interval, so I can already say, no, I don't agree with that. But they want you to do it a bit more officially. Um, I'm, I'm bad at this, I just took a couple of notes here. They want you to make the null hypothesis what they said basically that's all that is it's what did they say they said 80 percent um happy i don't know you can write anything you want the examiner is just looking for 80 percent in here somewhere you can write as much or as little english really as you want they're not going to take any marks away this would get 100 percent, for example i i believe anyway and then they want you to write the opposite to this this is the null hypothesis and the opposite of that well i would just write not 80 percent uh, so I don't really know what else to write there. Um, what else do they want you? They want you to come to a conclusion. Uh, so I, what did I jot down? Um, eight, I, jot, I wrote down 80% is outside um, confidence interval, which is what this one here, ah, I, can't, I couldn't be bothered finishing my English, so I'll just jot that down. Eight, outside confidence interval, therefore, I reject. Now, I since you're if you're going to be in an exam, spend a few extra minutes writing that. Uh, study what to write. I think it's a little ridiculous. 
asking a student to be this precise or anything, any amount of English saying, I reject this because it's outside the interval, will probably be enough to get you full marks. Okay, let's uh, move on to part B. I need to draw a little picture and I need to rub all this out. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, part B comes with this drawing here and they want us to, they leave a box here for A and B. So they tell us this is an aptitude test, or sorry, they tell us there is an aptitude test taken by 6,500 candidates. The test scores are normally distributed. That means they look like this. And it, most things in life look like this. Most people are in the middle. There's some really good people, some really bad people. That's it. That's it. Normal distribution works for so many things in life. That's why we learn about it. So the mean score, that's the average, right in the middle is 480. And the standard deviation is 90. So we often split these up into standard deviations. They actually tell us this is one standard deviation, like two and three standard deviations. Something like this. Um, yes, they tell us this shaded region represents all the people who are within one standard deviation of the mean. So this is the mean, this is one away. This is one away. Uh, write down the values of A and B. Well, they tell us the standard deviation, let me write it again there, is 90. That means the distance from there to there is 90. So what's B? Well, it's just 90 bigger than uh, 480. So it's quite simple. Am I right in saying this is 480? Let me double check on my own notes here. Uh, yes, uh, 570 would be B, and 90 less would be 390. And that's it. That's full marks for that. Um, part two says use the empirical rule to estimate the number of candidates within this region. That's, that's again, is quite easy. Well, I, I don't like this part because you have to memorize three numbers. And in the, actually, in, in your little booklet, there's a way to get a much, more, much better answer. So you don't have to memorize, it's in the booklet. But still, in the order level, we make you memorize three numbers. Anything between one standard deviation, I'll, I'll draw the three pictures here. Uh, let's see, there's one picture, two. These are all meant to be identical, so I apologize. That's one standard deviation, that's two, and that's three. Let me shade in these regions. Okay, it's meant to be these lines here. The red one is this first one. Between these next two would be the next one. And we just ask you, this is between one standard deviation, plus and minus one, plus and minus two, and plus and minus three. This is one here, one standard deviation. And we just ask you to memorize these numbers here, 68%, 90, these two I remember, 95%, 90, 99.7%. Now we use a, uh, we use this one here in a lots of maths questions. The, the last part, you've seen 95% row a few times. We often use that. Um, and this just means that 68% of people are in this world. 95% of people are in this world. And 99.7% of people are in this world. So 68% of people are in the one they asked us about. And that's all they want to do. Uh, get 68% of those people, which I believe there was, let me double check, 6,500 people, multiply that by 68%. And if we do that in a calculator, uh, we will get 4,420 people. So I believe that answers the question. Estimate the number of people in the shaded region. I would estimate it's about 4,420. This is, this is a rough number here. And as well, who knows, maybe, maybe the examiner likes giving this number out and there's little spikes here or anywhere. You know, never mind about that, it's a bit <laughs> confusing. This is the answer to that question. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, anything you see, any mistakes you see, anything like that, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Until next time, have a great day.